want to thank you very much. And it's an honor to be and sit down, please. Go ahead. We'll stay together for a little while. This is a big endorsement for me. This is like 373,077. Boy, that's a lot of protection. That's big protection. And we appreciate it very much. It's an honor. And I'm thrilled to be back with the incredible heroes and patriots of the Fraternal Order of Police, an incredible group and a group that's highly respected all over the country. You don't hear it, but I will tell you, it's true. To all of the law enforcement men and women here today, I respect you so much. I admire you. And as your president, I will always back the blue as I did. I back the blue more than any other person. I was not a defunder like Kamala. She was a defunder. She was a 10-year defunder. When you, uh, defund, when you want to defund for 10 years, that's the end of that one. I think I could leave right now and you say, there's no way that we're not voting for that guy. That's the ultimate, isn't it? Uh, before we begin, big news today is that the Manhattan DA witch hunt against uh, me has been postponed because everyone realizes that there was no case because I did nothing wrong. It's a witch hunt. It's a, an attack by my political opponents in Washington, D.C. And uh, comrade Kamala Harris and radical left <laughs> opponents for purposes of election interference. That's all that was. And it's a case that should have never been brought, should have never been brought. But nothing like that has ever really happened in the United States that we know of, at least. And it's strictly third world, Banana Republic stuff. Importantly, the public understands this, and so does every legal scholar, expert, and luminary, including people, and just highly respected people, like the people in this room are highly respected, like Andy McCarthy, Jonathan Turley, Alan Dershowitz, Mark Levin, Stephen Calabrese, David Rifkin, Greg Jarrett, Katie and Andrew Tchaikovsky. And even from CNN, Eli Honig, I appreciate that, Eli, because he's been, he's been great. They all said it's a case that is not a case, shouldn't even be brought, politics. But I greatly appreciate the words in the letter today from the judge. He said, if necessary, being utilized in the decision because there should be no, if necessary, this case should rightfully be terminated immediately. And uh, as we prepare for the most important election in the history of our country, it's the most important election we've ever had because our country is going bad. You may have noticed, you, you take a look at some of the people pouring into our country by the millions. In addition, there was a big political victory today in a certain place called North Carolina. Has anybody heard of North Carolina? <laughs> I even have a grandchild, very beautiful grandchild, named Carolina. And Laura's here today. Where is Laura? Where are you? Right there. Right there. Carolina is a beauty. She's a beautiful, she's a beautiful. And Eric came. He doesn't come too often for this, you know? He'd rather do his own speeches. People would rather hear him. So it's a great couple. Beautiful children, great couple. You know, she loves this state so much. And she said, oh, don't worry, you're going to win. They love you here. And she grew up here and had a great life here. I don't know if her life is as good now, frankly. She loves this place. And uh, she says, don't worry. I said, well, if anything bad happens, I'm blaming you. That'll be the end, right? But we've won it four times. We've won the primaries. We've won everything. We've won the primaries. And then uh, we won just another big one. We won by a lot. And uh, we have to win one more election, and uh, we'll be 6-0 and in North Carolina. We love North Carolina, and thank you for both being here. That's great. It's an honor. Your appeals court ruled today that Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s name should be taken off the ballot. And, <laughs> and that sounds like a bad thing for him. It's not. It's actually a great thing. He's an incredible team player. And he didn't want anybody to be voting his name because, as you know, he fully endorsed us. He's with us. He's going to be watching out for women's health and everybody's health. And uh, got a lot of great things to say. He's very smart, very good, great person. 
and very popular. So they didn't want to have, and we didn't, but he didn't either. He didn't want to have his name, so he gets some votes even though he was with us. And uh, we just won in the court. They said, no, it has to be left up there. And some people wouldn't realize it. So rather than voting for us, they'd vote for him. And that wouldn't help us very much, would it? And so that was a big thing. It means that all of those who love Bobby, and there's a lot of them, and all of the, that he stands for, especially regarding the health and well-being of us, can vote. They vote for me now. So all of the Bobby people are going to vote for me. And I appreciate the decision. When I grew up, we revered the men and women that we knew as I grew up in New York. And you've all heard of New York's finest. New York's finest. Who's from New York? Oh, there they are. You guys have been, you guys, you know, New York's finest endorsed me and they're not supposed to. They said, we don't care. We're endorsing you anyway, right? But I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I think we've been addressed by every police group or slightly related. Even if they're slightly related, we've gotten every one of them, and I appreciate it. Just nobody re we can respect more. But we also, uh, when we look around and we see, uh, because I consider you in this room to be America's finest, you're all over the country, all over from the country, all over the place. And uh, we really appreciate you being here. Got to meet a lot of you backstage. Uh, just amazing people. All you want to do is see our country be safe and prosperous, and we want to love our country, and we want to have reason to love it. The people of this country know it. We know all about you and the great job that you do, and uh, the people of this country respect you greatly for it. So I just want to thank you on behalf of everybody, because I see it. I'm all over, and this is a group that's respected like never before, and it's probably, unfortunately, we were talking a little while ago, and it's probably also uh, a profession that's under more danger and threat than ever before, which we hate to see. I visit a lot of uh, families uh, of police officers who are no longer with us, and uh, we have to give back the power and respect uh, that they deserve more than anybody, and we're going to do that. You're going to solve the problem. We have crime-ridden cities like we've never seen before. We've never seen anything like it, and you can do it. I said to 12 of your representatives backstage, I said, so if I give you the authorization to get rid of the crime, can you do it? They look at me like, what a stupid question. Of course we can. <laughs> so we're going to be doing that. But that's why I'm so deeply honored to receive the Fraternal Order of Police official endorsement for President of the United States. Thank you all very much in the room. I know you vote on that. Thank you very much. Great honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. I want to thank Patrick and every officer here this afternoon. Uh, it's really uh, something I, I will not forget. 373,000. And, you know, Patrick just corrected the teleprompter. <laughs> How did you add the other 4,000 people? <laughs> they want to join so badly because they think we're going to win. Everyone now wants to be doing that. Huh? He said he doesn't think he knows. Thank you very much. So to think that numbers like that, I mean, that's a big group. That's the largest group in the country by far, I guess, right? I also want to thank RNC Chairman Michael Watley, who used to be, as you know, the Republican Party chairman of the state, and we won the state so beautifully and, frankly, so easily. And he was very much into uh, securing the vote. That's why he's the head of the whole. Look, if we can keep the cheating down to a minimum, because these people cheat, they cheat like hell. If we can keep it down to a minimum, we win easily. If we had, let's say, a beautiful vote counter, an honest person comes down from on high <laughs> to count the votes. We win. I, I could stop campaigning. I could tell Michael and Laura, I don't have to come anywhere anymore. I'm just going to relax because, but we have to win. You know, we uh, too big to rig is the statement we use. Uh, but Michael and Laura, who's the co-chair, 
have been working really hard. So thank you, Laura, very much. We appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. As we gather today, American cities, suburbs, and towns are totally under siege. Kamala Harris and the communist left have unleashed a brutal plague of bloodshed, crime, chaos, misery, and death upon our land. Other than that, they're doing actually quite well. Thank you. <laughs> Just yesterday, three police officers were shot in Milwaukee, very tragically. 31 people were shot and five were killed in Chicago over Labor Day weekend. Can you imagine that? It's worse than in Afghanistan. We hear about Afghanistan and all these places. They don't compare with numbers like this. Baltimore is now facing the single most deadly drug crisis of any city in American history. And the number of homeless people on the streets of New York has just reached a 20-year high, and it's going a lot higher than that. Hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens. You know, you can't, according to the, look at all that fake news back there, but you can't. They don't like illegal migrant. They don't like illegal alien. They don't like anything. They want you to call them citizens, future citizens. You ever hear that one? Future citizens, future citizens of our country. That's what they want to hear. But I don't think this room's inclined to do that. In city after city, the law-abiding citizen is forced to live in fear and danger and in filth. Mothers can't take their kids to the park. Graffiti is everywhere. The innocent are victimized in random attacks. Very brutal attacks and slayings are absolutely commonplace. Mobs of criminals walk into stores and clean out thousands of dollars in merchandise with absolutely no fear of punishment because you're not allowed to do your jobs. You can't even go to a pharmacy without everything being locked behind glass. The new thing in New York, you, you go to a pharmacy to buy aspirin, to buy a toothbrush, and it takes you 45 minutes to get a clerk to open up the, the glass because people are walking in just taking as much as they want. I don't know if you know that in uh, San Francisco, which this woman, our opponent, uh, I would say our opponent, I think we could, anybody in favor of her in this room, by the way, let me just, Okay, then I can safely say our opponent. But she, uh, no, she destroyed, she destroyed San Francisco, but she came up with a great idea. You can steal as much as you want up to $950 and nothing happens to you. After that, nothing happens to you also, if you want to really, when you think of it, uh, really nothing happens to you no matter what the hell you do. Unless you happen to be running for office and you accuse the election of being fraudulent, then a lot of things happen, okay? But other than that, nothing happens. Think of that, 950. So guys are walking in with calculators. You have criminals walking in, they're adding it up because they know if they stay below 950. Can you believe it? 950 is like a lot of money, isn't it? Under the Harris regime, 99% of law-abiding citizens suffer while criminals run free and our country is plagued into literally third world conditions. In many ways, we're a third world country, but we're gonna clean that up real fast. I'm here today to declare that we do not have to live this way. And when I'm president of the United States, we are not going to take it anymore. We're not gonna take it anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And frankly, no country can sustain what we're going through with 21 million people allowed to come in from places that we don't want to talk about, but we will. Since Kamala Harris took office, she has presided over a 43% increase in violent crime including a 58% increase in rape and an 89% increase in aggravated assault. And under Comrade Kamala, assaults on police officers are up a minimum of 32%, and many of them are not reported. And if they are reported, they're not taken down. And shootings of our police officers are up by over 16%. The day I take office, 
is the day that Kamala's crime wave comes to an end. It's a crime wave in our country. We've never seen anything like it. And frankly, you know, we talk about all of the, the problems that we have, and they list them, and usually the economy is number one. To me, the number one thing that I get spoken to by the people, and I meet so many people, is crime. I mean, they can't believe it. They can't walk out of their apartments and buy a loaf of bread without getting mugged or wrapped or shot. You look at Chicago, it's like, it's not even believable. They had actually, the numbers I, I read to you were, were very minor compared to about two months ago where they had uh, 117 people shot and 17 dead in one weekend. Think of it, 117 people were shot and 17 died. And the fake news doesn't talk about it very much. But we take back our country, and we will take back our country very soon for the law-abiding citizens of America, because this is about the law-abiding citizens, not the criminals. They're protecting the criminals and not protecting the law-abiding citizens. We can't let that happen. With your help, we will restore public safety to our streets. We will bring back law and order to our nation. And we will give the heroes in blue the power to legally protect us and the respect that you deserve more than any other group of people, what you have to go through. And then you don't get the backup at all. You're going to have the backup like you never had it before. Well, you had it four years ago, but even more so now because they've let it get so out of control. I mean, the only thing good about this period of time, you know, we did great in 2016. We did much better in 2020, I hate to tell you. you know, we did much better. Got millions more votes. I was told if you got the same number of votes, you can't lose. We got millions more votes than we got in 2016. And in 2020, with all of that, the only thing good about it is that we see how badly things are. I think the reason the spirit is more now than 2020 or 2016 is because they saw how bad it was. It was, it's been so bad. And we're able to do things and you can be stronger and tougher and get your job done because they can't, even radical left people, or at least uh, people that are leaning left will understand that we have to clean up our crime. You can't have a country like this. There's no country like this, no country. And we're a laughing stock all over the world. Over the past four years, Kamala Harris and the radical Democrat party have led a war on law enforcement in America. They're against you so strongly. As a result, families that do everything right and carry this country on their shoulders have watched helplessly as their communities dissolved all around them. Kamala Harris and the radical liberals force anarchy on the American people while they, they live in safety, in many cases behind walls. You know that? Nancy Pelosi has a big wall wrapped around her house. Of course, it didn't help too much with the problem she had, did it? But she had a big wall, a big wall wrapped around her house. But then she says, we don't want to, you have no idea what it was to get the wall done. Uh, Kamala Harris opposed me, Nancy Pelosi, everybody, the Democrats largely, not all of them, but they largely opposed it, but we got it built. I actually took it out of the military. I considered it an invasion because dealing with Congress is so crazy. I said, okay, ready? We're going to take $10 billion out of the military budget. You're going to buy about three less army tanks. And we're going to build a wall because this is an invasion of our country. As soon as I said that, everybody said, you're right. And we did. We built over 571 miles of wall. And that's what gave us the best. We had the best border numbers in history. And now we have the worst border numbers in history. There's never been anything like it. And I pulled down a chart, if you remember, about uh, two and a half months ago on my right. I said, I'm so proud of that chart. Now I love it more than almost anything in the world. <laughs> I love it more than I even love the police. Can you believe it? No, I pulled down a chart. I always look to my left, always. And I seldom use it. I use it maybe 20% of the time for speeches. But it's always on my left. It's always at the end of the speech. And this time at the beginning of the speech, I said, pull down that chart. Mm. And if I didn't turn, I wouldn't be speaking with you today. So I love that chart. That chart is beautiful. I love that chart. I pulled it down. I said, boy, that is one beautiful. That's one beautiful, the yellow and the blue and the red, right? Anyway, but what that chart showed and shows is the 
numbers, you see it went way down to almost nothing. And that was my final week in office. And then it went like a rocket ship right through the sky. We've never had anything like it. No country's ever had anything like it. Wealthy liberals destroy cities with defund the police. And there's still that movement that you just can't shake it. And sanctuary for illegals while they move further into gated compounds. They set loose violent repeat offenders with no bail while Marxist prosecutors harass and threaten police officers who protect the hardworking citizens. They don't want you to protect the people. It's hard to believe, actually. You know, sometimes you say these things and as you're saying them, you're saying, is that right? But that's right. It's, it, you know, it's pretty hard to believe. Like, why would anybody say we don't want to have a border? Why would anybody say the whole world can empty out into our country, even though it's not sustainable? Why would anybody say th something sort of simple like uh, we want men to play in women's sports? Why do they want to say we want men to play in women's sports? Why was that? Did you see the Olympics where they had two fighters, two transitioned fighters? They transitioned. This is the proper way of saying it. I say that just in case I don't want to get myself in trouble with the media, the fake news. And we, they had two fighters. And you see the one young lady, beautiful young lady, and she was a fighter from Italy. And she fought a transitioned person who gave her just, boom, a left jab. Now, jab, for those that don't know, that's just sort of, you know, keep her going before you give it. Boom. She backed up. Whoa. Then he did another jab and she quit. She said, I've never been hit like that in my life, right? She quit. Anyway, he went on to win the gold medal easily. And the other one went on to win the gold medal easily. But you have to see the weightlifting stats where an eighth of an ounce is added on. And for 18 years, they had a record. Then some guy comes along. I mean, some transition person. Have you lifted before? No, no, I haven't. Not much. Oh, good. Well, good luck. Let's see. Bing. <laughs> it's crazy. These people are crazy. And it's so demeaning to women. I mean, some, someday, are they, you know, these women are great athletes. The whole thing is crazy. But I know you love it, right? There's men on my right. He must love that as he sees. He's seething. He's, I just watch him watching. He's seething as he watches this stuff, right? He can't, he's actually looking and he can't even believe it, right? He can't even believe it. Anyway, but as president, I will break the grip of the Marxists on our justice system and I will end Kamala's war. And it's her, it's her and a group of people. But it's a war on police and together we will launch a war on violent crime in America. We have to, we, we are a laughing stock all over the world. You know, everyone's always talking about these terrible countries to live in that regime and this or that. But those countries don't have crime like we do. Not even not even close. Under Harris, the number of police resignations surged recently to over 60 percent. You've never had a number like that. And the first spending bill I sign, I will make a record investment in hiring, retention and training for police officers. So important. It's powerful. So important. And do you remember when I was uh, president, I gave you billions of dollars worth of military equipment that was unused. It was in the storage rooms. We talked about it. It was in the storage rooms. We talked about it. Remember that a few years ago? And I made it available to the police. I took such heat. They said, it looks too powerful. It looks police-like. I said, isn't that a good thing? I mean, that's a good thing. But I gave you billions of dollars. It was sitting there drawing dust, billions and billions. It had storage houses all over the country, big storage houses of trucks. And a lot of it was defensive material, too, and defensive uh, Jeeps with armor plates all over them and a lot of great stuff. And I gave it all out to the police. Took a lot of heat. I'd never thought I thought it would be a popular thing. It was with the police. But the crazies out there, they thought it was just a terrible thing. Uh, they thought it looked too powerful. And you got it. And we saved a lot of lives with that equipment, right? We saved a lot of lives. And, and we saved a lot of rent. We also saved a lot of rent that we didn't have to pay to all these storage places all over the country. We're going to get you uh, pay raises and reinforcements. We're going to get you reinforcements because you need them. And Harris 
repeatedly sponsored legislation to strip police officers immunity. You know, it's interesting when you say the word Harris, nobody knows who the hell I'm talking about. Harris. Harris. They say, who is Harris? If you say to a person, what's our vice president's name? They don't know. Now, Kamala is an unusual name, but at least you know who we're talking about. When I say Harris, nobody knows who the hell I'm talking about. They say, who is that? So maybe we'll refer to him more as Kamala. It's a little friendlier, too, but it's hard to be friendly with somebody that wants to destroy our country. She's right now practicing. Do you know that? She's in Pennsylvania, and she's practicing for the debate. She's locked herself in a room. She's got a lot to learn. She's locked herself <laughs> in a room, and they have one problem. You know what the problem is? They have... MAGA people outside screaming, we love Trump, we love Trump, we love Trump, and they can't focus. Can you believe it? Just came over. They got MAGA people all over the place, and they're screaming, we love Trump, and she can't focus. That's okay. As president, I will sign legislation to strengthen protections for police officers, so important, and I will crack down on Marxist prosecutors like Philadelphia's Larry Krasner and L.A.'s George Gaston. No, it's unbelievable. These people, you get a murderer. This guy just shot three people, and he's out on the streets in two hours. It's crazy. No bail. Cashless, they call it. No longer will corrupt DAs be allowed to engage in selective and race-based enforcement of the law. My administration will issue hundreds of millions of dollars in federal grants to reward cities and towns and return to proven crime-fighting methods, including stop and frisk and broken windows policing. We did that with Rudy Giuliani. It was so successful. You know, New York, before Giuliani, New York, New York was at the edge. It was a hopeless situation. And Rudy came in and he, uh, he did the stop and frisk thing. And he did at numbers that were moderate, good. You can't go crazy. But he, they knew what they were doing. And they did the windows. And the windows sounds like a ridiculous idea. But when they had all these burned out places, they made them look livable. And uh, we went from a, a crime ridden city to the safest big city anywhere in the world. You know, it's a big it's a big accomplishment. He really he doesn't get the credit he deserves. I will tell you that. But we'll get the homeless and the dangerously deranged, of which we have many off of our streets. And many are coming in because, I said, they're coming in from the mental institutions all over the world. And we'll get them the help they need. It's a very hard thing to get the help they need. And many of these people are never going to make a comeback. You know that. They can't make a comeback. It's horrible. It's a horrible thing. But we'll make our towns and cities safe again. We'll make them clean and beautiful once again. And we'll have places that you live in the manner to which you're supposed to be living, because people are living in hell right now. Thank you. And working with local law enforcement, we will launch a federal task force to dismantle the gangs, the street crews, and the criminal networks that are ravaging our towns. This will include a 10-year mandatory minimum sentence for anyone guilty of human smuggling, a guaranteed life sentence for any guilty child trafficking. <laughs> and the death penalty for drug dealers and anyone guilty of child or woman sex trafficking, which they are doing at numbers which are <laughs> massive. And we're also calling for a strong death penalty for anyone who kills a police officer. Right? We'll get that done. We'll get that done. We'll get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Kamala actually claims that crime is down on her watch. Can you believe this? Crime's down. They lie. Crime's down. Crime is through the roof. They forgot to include about nine cities that are the worst cities in the world. You know, they forgot to include Chicago and a few of the others. Uh, and that was the FBI. That's a shame. They issued stats, and everybody was surprised that crime was about the same or maybe a little bit down. And then we found out that 
they didn't include, just like they didn't include 818,000 jobs in their jobs report, they, they uh, were missing 818, they said 818,000 more people. It turned out to be a total fraud. You know, at a certain point, it becomes fraud. When you're down by 5,000 or 10,000 people, but 818,000 fake job numbers were put in a month ago, and uh, it was revealed by a leaker or somebody, but it came out and it was really pretty bad. But they did the same thing on the crime numbers uh, in order to make the crime numbers look better, which is still atrocious, but they wanted to make them look better. And Kamala's crime statistics are really as fake, essentially, as those job numbers. But you just think of it. I mean, think of it. 818,000 fake jobs they put in in order to make their job numbers look better. The FBI's crime report does not include crime numbers from the most dangerous war zones and ganglands in America. Chicago, I'll tell you, the ones that weren't included are Chicago, Oakland, New Orleans, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Jose, which is rough. Nearly 30% of jurisdictions did not report their crime stats, and they were the ones that had the highest numbers. So that's why your crime numbers were terrible, but they didn't look as bad as they should. Crime is worse today than at any time in our country's history. Kamala Harris destroyed San Francisco. She destroyed California. Now she's destroying America. She will destroy this country. She will destroy this country. And now that people are seeing what's going on, nobody knew who the hell she was, in all fairness. She was vice president that nobody knew. She shouldn't have been vice president. If you, th you know, they call a threat to democracy. She's a threat to democracy. The way they call me, threat. I take a bullet in the head, and I'm a threat. No, no. She's a threat to democracy. Think of it. But uh, she didn't get any votes. He got 14 million votes. She got none. Zero. She was the first one out of 22 people to leave. She left the race because she got no support. And now she's running as the Democrat candidate. And I say, that's a threat to democracy. They're the real threat to democracy. They use that. That's just a standard line. Donald Trump is a threat to democracy because he wants to stop crime. You know, <laughs> These people are very mixed up people. This November, the law-abiding citizens of our country are going to tell her, Kamala, you've done a horrible job. You remember The Apprentice? You couldn't be worse, and we're not going to let you do it again. Kamala, you're fired. Get out of here. Get out of here. It is true, though. I mean, she's got no votes, and now she's running, so she explained that one not uh, the democratic way it's not a democrat you know i never call it, they call it the democratic party because it sounds so nice i call it the democrat party it's actually the democrat party they ought to change the name they're always arguing that i always call it that it's called democrat party democratic sounds so beautiful the democratic party it's even nicer in a speech but uh they ought to change the name instead of complaining and you know what she could do all these things that she complains about right now she should go and fix them. She shouldn't even go to the debate. She should go back to Washington, D.C. and fix all the things she's complaining about. There's no problem. As DA of San Francisco, Kamala was the original Marxist prosecutor. She was the original. She shielded illegal alien crack dealers from deportation at a level that nobody had ever seen before. She refused to seek the death penalty for an animal who killed a police officer. She didn't even call the officer's family. She refused. She didn't want to call his family. As California Attorney General Kamala redefined sex trafficking, and child sex trafficking, and assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. Kamala then called herself a leader of the movement for no, no cash bail. She was very proud of that. No cash bail. That has done more to hurt our cities than almost anything I can think of. Where these people are getting out of jail one hour later, they don't even see the jail. And they're violent criminals and they're out of jail immediately. She called for abolishing ICE and these ICE people 
are incredible patriots and they have a tough job and you work with them very closely but they are incredible and they're tough and they love our country and ending all jail sentences for parole violators no more jail sentence what's the purpose of even reporting if you don't go to jail for parole violations unless again you're involved in political activity meaning you want to run a democratic country you want to run a country that is based on fair and free voting you're in serious trouble if you get caught trying to find out what are the real results of an election. It's an amazing thing. Do you ever see that? They go after the people that are looking at the crime and they do terrible things to them. But the people that committed the voter fraud and everything, they can do whatever they want to do. It's so crazy. And I hope you as the greatest people, I, the, just as great as there is anybody in their country, I hope you watch for voter fraud. Uh, so it starts early, you know, it starts in a week. But I hope you can watch and you're all over the place. Watch for the voter fraud because we win. Without voter fraud, we win so easily. Hopefully we're going to win anyway, but we want to keep it down. You can keep it down just by watching because, believe it or not, they're afraid of that badge. They're afraid of you people. They're afraid of that more than anything else. They're afraid. So I hope you can watch. During the 2020 riots, Kamala Harris urged her followers to donate to a fund to bail out Violent rioters, arsonists, and looters out of jail. You remember in Minnesota, yeah. one of the criminals she helped bail out of jail went on to murder a man in St. Paul, shooting him six times in the head and torso. Most disqualifying of all, Kamala Harris endorsed defunding the police, and she endorsed it so for so many years. No politician who endorsed Marxist defund the police lunacy should ever be the president of the United States, because that's your philosophy. <laughs> I promise you, I will never tell you we're going to defund the police. I will only tell you that we might overfund the police. That's your, that's your, we'll be over budget. I'll have to call up Patrick and say, Patrick, we're over budget. I'm sorry. We're over budget, Patrick. I'm sorry. He'll say, it's okay. Don't worry about it. But if I said, Patrick, we're defunding, I would, I would have some serious problems with that. But no crime Kamala has committed against the rule of law is worse than her nation wrecking border invasion. There's never been anything like it. For nearly four years, border czar Harris, and she's the border czar, but now she denies that term. And she denies that she had much to do with the border. She was put in charge by Sleepy Joe, right? And who likes, oh, you gotta, I, let me have a free poll, please. I love these free polls. You know, you go out to a poll, so they charge you $300,000 for a stupid poll. They interview like 200 people. And they send you numbers. I don't even think they leave the office. I think they just might come up. Let's see. It's 50, 51 to 49. And uh, But here I get a truth. If you had a name, and he's gone now, so don't worry about it. But just out of curiosity, who likes Crooked Joe? Who likes Sleepy Joe? Who likes Crooked Joe? Who likes Sleepy Joe? Yeah, a lot of people do. A lot. Well, now he's got plenty of time to sleep. You ever see a guy, somebody told him he looks great in a bathing suit on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday during the week. And he goes to the beach with a thing that's built, you know, it's built for children to lift up. You know, it's aluminum and he can't lift it. He can't lift his feet out of the sand. And then he's dead, cold, knocked out, sleeping. And I say, you know, if I ever hit that kind of a condition and hopefully it won't happen for a long time, the last thing I'm going to want to do is be sleeping with cameras all over the place taking your picture. I don't want to be sleeping in public. He sleeps like I've never seen anybody sleep like that. He, go, he hits the chair and he's within seconds, seconds, he's gone. He's out. And oh, and he's a six handicap. Yeah. You ever see him swing? He goes like this. The ball goes three yards if he's lucky, if it doesn't go backwards. <laughs> Somebody said, you know, that angered you because they said I was very good in the debate. John King from CNN, that was one of the great debate performances. I didn't think about it, but they said the only time he got angry was when he said he was a six handicap. And did you notice he said, 
I'm a six handicap. He always says 6.2. You know, he wants to be accurate. The guy's not a, a hundred handicap. He couldn't break 200. I offered him a million dollars if he could break. You saw that. Now, a six handicap can easily break a hundred, right? Easily for those golfers. I said, one million dollars to your favorite charity. If you go out, just at a nice course, we'll pick from the blue tees, like middle tees. If you can shoot a hundred, one million dollars. They never heard back from him, you know? But did you notice he said, I'm a six handicap? And then within about 30 seconds, he said, well, I'm an eight handicap. I said, that was quick. <laughs> we got him up two strokes. Yeah, they said I was the most angry when I heard that because it may have been more fabricated than almost anything else he said. <laughs> anyway, no, the whole that's the whole story with these people. Look, they lie and they cheat and they've destroyed our country. They've destroyed our country. He has... He's the worst president our country's ever had. She's the worst vice president. There's never been such destruction. And, and I mean a war that would have never been had. There's no way Russia was going in. I know Putin very well. He was not going in. There's no way that Israel would have been attacked on October 7th. We wouldn't have inflation. You wouldn't have had that travesty in Afghanistan, the most embarrassing day in the history of our country. No, we've never had a person like this, but of all of them, I think allowing 21 million plus, plus, plus people to come in from places unknown, I think it's, uh, I really think it's probably the hardest thing to solve and it's the worst thing that's happened to our country. But they've invaded our country and as I said, they came from the prisons and the jails and the mental institutions and more terrorists than we've ever seen come into our country. We actually had a year where Border Patrol said that we had no terrorists. I didn't, I didn't believe it but I love it. 2019, they said no terrorists have come into our country. None. I didn't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it, but I use it anyway, because it's what a hell, that, what a stat. But they said, but we were very tough on that. And there were very few. I doubt there were, I'm sure there were some, but they said there was zero terrorists in 2019. Check it out. Border Patrol. And uh, now we have numbers coming in the likes of which we've never seen. And the worst terrorists in the world, they're coming in from Yemen, they're coming in from all over the Middle East, and they're coming in from places that even you don't want to know about. An estimated 75% of arrests in Midtown Manhattan and over 60% of arrests in Queens are now illegal aliens. Can you imagine that? So more than, much more than half are illegal aliens. And they, all they do is talk about how people that come into our country illegally don't commit the same crimes as our people. They're so wrong. And they're more violent. They're more violent. Our country is being ravaged by migrant crime like nobody can believe. In June, 12-year-old, and I got to know the parents, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Nungari in Texas was tied up, assaulted, and strangled to death by migrant criminals from Venezuela that borders our Harris released into our country in February, an illegal alien shot three D.C. police officers right through a door. In June, an illegal alien shot two NYPD officers, one in the chest, one in the leg. Many have died. Many, many have died. You could go over these stats all day long. Death. In July, another illegal alien reportedly shot a San Antonio police officer with a rifle and shot him in a bad place. Only days ago, a migrant from Haiti who come... Kamala flew into our country very specially, was arrested in Massachusetts for molesting a 10-year-old boy. Last month, another Haitian migrant was arrested in the same state for raping a 15-year-old girl. They're raping and they're killing people at levels that we've never seen. And you've seen what's going on in Colorado, and you see what's gone in Chicago. As we speak, heavily armed Venezuelan gangs have taken over entire apartment buildings and apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado terrorizing the residents. They're taking over. In the old days, you had to pay to buy that building. They, they just take it over. Oh, the people are living in such fear. They've, they've left. Under Border Czar Harris, we are being conquered. We're being actually conquered, if you think of it from within. But as soon as I'm back in the White House, the conquest will end and the great liberation of America will begin. And you're going to be the ones leading the pack. We will take back every single square inch of American territory and 
that's been invaded by these migrant gangs. It's been taken over. I mean, real estate patches have been taken over. And this is just the beginning. You haven't seen anything yet because they're just getting, they're just sort of assimilating. And how about what they're doing to our schools? They're going into schools. They're beating the hell out of our other pupils. We're giving them uh, chairs. And we're telling people that have been there, families that have had their children in that school, you can't go to that school anymore. We will dispatch ICE and the elite teams of federal law enforcement to clear out the gangs from Aurora and every other American city that's being torn up and victimized. And we'll get MS-13 and other vicious gangs out of our schools, out of our high schools, your communities, and out of our country. We're going to get them out of our country fast. You know, when I first came in, MS-13 was all over the place. We had so much. And I said, take them back to their country, Honduras, Guatemala. Take them back, El Salvador. And a general told me, sir, we can't take them back. Why? They won't accept them. When the plane is ready to land, they have major aircraft landed all over the runway. So you can't land the plane. The bus, the bus is a stop. They broke up the road, so you can't get the buses in. We can't get them back. They won't take them. They told us, don't even think about bringing. We'll end up in a big fight. I said, how much money do we pay those? It was three countries in particular. And they have MS-13 criminals, the worst gang members. They, they make our gang members look like very sweet people. That's the only thing good about it. Our people, our criminals look so nice by comparison. These are rough people. I said, how much money do we give these people? They said, 750 million. Sir, it's $750 million, sir. I said, let them know that effective immediately. Uh, they're not getting any more money. You know, we give it as foreign aid, like fools. We give so much money to people that don't have any respect for us at all. Tell them the money is cut off. Uh, they are defunded. I wish I used that term. We're defunding. We're defunding them. They're delinquent. We're defunding them. And they told them that. And the next day, I get a call from the three countries. It was like almost early in the morning on the Oval Office. Sir, there seems to be a problem. Is there anything I can do? You have to understand, they wouldn't let for years anybody come back. They got them out. They got their criminals out of the country, gave them to us. When we sent them back, they said, sir, is there anything? Is there a problem? I said, yeah. You sent in caravans all of these people, and you're not taking them back. You're going to take them back. Well, sure, we would love to take them back, please. Would be our great honor to have MS-13 back in our country, sir. It would be our great. We love MS-13 very much. They only kill five people a year per person. And they took them back. I still didn't pay them. I still didn't pay them. But you know, I just found out that now they're getting four billion dollars with Biden. Four billion dollars instead of the seven hundred and fifty million dollars, and they're behaving worse than they've ever behaved. I will support mandatory minimum sentences of 20 years for illegal alien gang members caught committing gun crimes, drug trafficking crimes, or acts of violence, or will send them back to their country with the assurance that they'll be put in prison. And I will make their home countries pay for the cost of their imprisonment through reduced foreign aid and high tariffs or taxes if they don't behave. You know, the tariffs are great. If they don't behave, you just say, that's okay. You don't have to behave. I'm putting a 50% tariff on everything you send in. And they behave like little babies. The days of foreign nations dumping their criminals into America are over. I will stop the invasion. I will shut down deadly sanctuary cities. And we will carry out the largest deportation operation because we have no choice in the history of our country. By sealing the border, we will also push back the flood of fentanyl and other deadly drugs that's pouring into our country at record numbers. Under my administration, we reduced drug overdose deaths for the first time in nearly three decades by quite a bit, but nothing like it could be. Because the only thing that's going to stop drug dealers from doing their job is a thing called the death penalty. And I don't know, people are ready for the death penalty. Do you know a drug dealer kills during his or her life? An average, of, an average of 500 people. So when you say the death penalty and it ends, I was in China with President Xi before COVID. I got along with him very well. After COVID, I didn't really deal with him. I wasn't so thrilled with him, but I got along with him. I had a good relationship. I said, you have 1.4 billion people. 
do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we have no drug problem. And what do you attribute that to? Death penalty. Death penalty for drug dealers. They have no problem with one point. They have no problem. The only problem they have is they send the drugs to us. Under Kamala, drug overdose deaths are up 18 percent, but we're going to stop the scourge. I will sign an executive order on my first day, making it the official policy of the U.S. government to completely eliminate the presidents of drug cartels and foreign gangs in the United States. We're going to eliminate them. And as I did four years ago, we will deploy the U.S. Navy to impose a full blockade on cartel activity, because what they do is you block up the land all of a sudden. The money they make is astronomical. Boats are no problem. Getting the boats, buying the boats, owning the boats, no problem. I will get China to give their maximum death penalty to dealers of fentanyl. I had that deal worked out with President Xi. And then when I left, they didn't do it. They didn't get it done. He probably said they forgot. They probably did. But we had a deal where he was going to impose the maximum penalty, which was death on dealers that were sending fentanyl to the United States. How good would that have been? Starting on November 5th, the most important day in the history of our country, no neighborhood will be left to rot from the plague of drugs. No citizen will be abandoned to migrant gangs and no community will be surrendered to violent crime. We will take back our cities. We will clean up our streets. We will restore peace to our schools. And together, we will make America safe again for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. Together, we will make America great again. And thank you very much for this great honor of the endorsement. God bless you. God bless. God bless our great police. And God bless America. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you very much.